What is your name, please? My name is Texas Shorty. What is your name, please? My name is Texas Shorty. What is your name, please? My name is Texas Shorty. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Texas Shorty and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Carter. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of Suave, hairdresser and conditioner, and Endon, dandruff treatment shampoo. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Polly Bergen. Next, Mr. Don Amici. Then, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. Panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, Texas Shorty, have two loves. The first, of course, is Texas. The second is my fiddle. I've been playing country music on my breakdown fiddle since I was six years old. I also enter fiddling contests, which are judged by position, timing, holds, bowing, and tone. I have won both the Texas and the National Old Time Fiddling Championships, but I'm most proud of the title I hold now, World's Champion Country Fiddler, signed Texas Shorty. <laughs> Three gentlemen, panel, start things off tonight, all claiming to be Texas Shorty, World's Champion Country Fiddler. And let's begin this first round of questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Number one, who had the big record of uh, Big Bouquet of Roses? Uh, Eddie Arnold, I believe. Number two, um, what is, there's a, there's a, a Western singer whose last name is Tubbs. Could you give me his first name? Ernie. Uh, number three, who is Joe Venuti? Uh, he is a jazz violinist. Uh, number one, where does the Grand Ole Opry originate? Nashville, Tennessee. Number two, who's the head of the Grand Ole Opry? I don't know. Number three, do you know? No, I don't know either. Number one, who's the head of the Grand Ole Opry? Uh, I don't know for sure. It's... Number two, who said I'm going to the wagon? These shoes are killing me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Number going two, to the who wagon. said I'm going to the wagon? My shoes are killing me. <laughs> sorry, I don't know that one either. I beg your pardon? I said I'm sorry, I don't know that one either. Number three? No, I don't know. Number one? No. Shocking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number uh, uh, two, where'd the panhandle get its name? Uh, it's the part of Texas that sticks up by Oklahoma, sticking on up just like a handle there. It's a panhandle. Uh, number three, how do you judge a, uh, how, how do they judge a fiddling contest? Uh, tone, uh, position, quality of the, the bow, the stroke. Number one? Uh, timing, tone, uh, position, and, uh, the bow stroke. Smooth. Do they... Uh, Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, do you play by ear? Yes, ma'am. Number two, do you play by ear? Yes, ma'am, I do. Number three, do you play by ear? Yes, ma'am. That knocks out an awful lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> number one, what are the strings made of on your violin? Uh, steel string. Number two, what are the strings made of on your violin? They're made of steel wrapped with chrome. Wrapped with chrome? And number three, what are the strings? Don't you all play with cat gut, any of you? Cat gut. <laughs> Number one, when you hold a bow in your hand, where is your thumb? On the bottom of the frog. Number two. Tom? Is that possible? Thank you. <laughs> uh, gee, a lot of questions here, too. Uh, number three, what uh, notoriously happens to a fiddler's dog? Beats me. Do you know number two? Beats number me. one, do you know what happens to a fiddler's dog and why? No, I don't believe. Thank you. Uh, number one, how do you pronounce M-E-X-I-A? Do you know? No, I don't believe. Number I two, do you happen to know how to pronounce that? Number three, no. how about you? I don't. 
Do you know how to pronounce N-A-C-O-G-D-O-C-E-S? It's a Texas town. No, I don't. Can you I tell me what county, that. number three, what county is Matagordo in? Uh, that's in Brown, Texas. I guess that's it. Time to mark your ballots and vote, if you will, please, panel. And as you do so, remember that you must vote for, without consultation, number one, number two, or number three. The team of challengers will get $250 for every incorrect vote. Has everybody voted? Everybody voted? No, I haven't. It's just murder. <sighs> Okay, Polly, for whom did you vote? It could be any one of them. It really could. No, I, I voted for number one. They know an awful lot about, about Western music because um, Ernest Tubbs they knew, Eddie Arnold, Bouquet of Roses. I didn't know there was such a thing as, a, as steel strings on a violin. I thought they were all cat gut. So I started to go for number three, but she said it, uh, Kitty, you know, sort of said it before he said it. So I thought maybe he might have gotten it from her. I thought it was number two because he's the tallest and he's called Texas Shorty. And I figured you'd do something like that to it. But I, I just, I have to go for number one. I really do. Uh, the accent is, is the best, of, of, I feel, of the three. I may be wrong. I don't know. Would you mind running through that all again? <laughs> yes, sir. It's been very Don, please. Don, Amici. For whom did you vote? Oh. Well, I thought probably uh, uh, number one, uh, he had the string. What did he have? The, uh, st the iron strings, was it? Steel. Steel, <laughs> Steel strings. Yes, Steel. Well, I don't, I don't know. Iron. Well, I don't know. I just was going along here with what uh, Polly said. They all sound here to want to know the name of Ernie's Cubs and all the rest. I don't know. I voted for number three. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I wow. Think confused, Polly. For whom did you vote? I voted for number one. Number two, I don't think, has a Texas accent. No, he doesn't. And number one, um, I, it, I've never seen steel strings on a violin, but the sound I hear on those records that country <laughs> fiddlers have sounds like steel strings to me. Don, what about you? I voted for number three, uh, mostly because he knew uh, the name of Johnny Frigo. Who? Uh, what Johnny Frigo was, who he was which is uh, interesting, and the other ones I couldn't get any answers out of, so I had to go for three. All right, there we have it now. It's uh, time to find out whether we're right or wrong because we've placed our votes on the line and we'll stand or fall with them. Let's see how well we did as we discover which one of these three gentlemen is the world's champion country fiddler, the Willow Real Texas Shorty. Please stand up. Thank you very much, Shorty. What about, uh, you have a question, Polly? Uh, yes, I just want to say, uh, the only <coughs> thing really that worried me, uh, I didn't realize they were using steel strings on violins. Uh, have they That's used... the sound they make. Yes, have they hear. done that long? Or is that uh, a new thing? Or uh, what? Breakdown fillers do. Breakdown? You know, they, the gut strings change too much with the atmosphere. And... I see. They That's tried right. iron strings, but they were too heavy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I'm Joe Collins. I'm ticket counter manager for Braniff Airways in New York City, and I know nothing about music. <laughs> <laughs> and number three, what about you, sir? My name is Lowell Greer, and I'm a circulation manager for Hearst Magazine. Thank you. <laughs> I have here Texas Shorty's own fiddle, which I'm told is 240 years old, and there are the steel strings all the way around there, in case you want to see them. I thought we might ask Shorty to give us a little something of what caused him to oh, win the world you. championship. that championship, believe me. Let's check on the record now for the voting and see what we have. We have two correct and two incorrect. So the two incorrect are $250 each for a total of $500 from Helene Curtis. And of course, when you weigh out a gift box of Lancerie fragrances to your ladies. Thanks so much for being with us. Hope you had fun. Good night, gentlemen. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers.
What is your name, please? My name is Dale Messick. What is your name, please? My name is Dale Messick. What is your name, please? My name is Dale Messick. Follow along once again, panel, if you will, with your copies of this affidavit. I, Dale Messick, am a cartoonist. I began my artistic career as a designer of comic greeting cards. For the past 20 years, however, I have been drawing a comic strip that appears in 90 newspapers in the United States and other parts of the world, and is read daily by millions of people. I am the creator and writer of the cartoon strip entitled Brenda Starr, signed Dale Messick. Panel, we have here three people claiming to be Dale Messick, creator and writer of Brenda Starr. We'll begin this round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, bud. Uh, number three, please. What is the name of the car in uh, uh, Brenda Starr, the one she's recently been driving? I don't know. Uh, number one, who is Chester Gould, please? A cartoonist. Uh, number one, when did Lily Ann appear in Brenda Starr? Number, number one. Oh, me? Yes, number one. What is the name of the uh, comic strip that appears within a comic strip in a famous New York newspaper? I don't know. Do you know number two, please? I don't know. The name of the comic strip that appears within a comic strip? Very famous. Polly Bergen. Fearless Fosdick appears inside uh, Little Abner. That's the real. That's the real creator of Mendoza. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I feel like I should be, because I read it all the all time. What's the name I of the read. car? Oh, the cheetah. Right. Number one. <laughs> Don't you remember that? Are was, you sure that was I'm the not the really the, the real Maria. day? Well, number one, um, what is the flower that the mystery man in Brenda Starr's life always sends her? A black orchid? Number two, which eye has the... Which eye has the... No, I can't say that again. <laughs> it's Paulina Curtis. Well, number two, um, uh, which eye wears the patch? Right eye. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Looking at you or in the other... <laughs> Don Amici. Number uh, uh, three, who was the originator of Moon Mullins? Um, number one? Oh, that doesn't have my paper. Um... Number two? Fred Johnson. The Fred. originator? Uh, he does it now. Yes, I know. Uh, number uh, uh, three, who, uh, who is the originator of the Gumps? Um, number one? Um, I, uh, I can't remember right now. <laughs> number three, how many, how many uh, uh, people do your drawings? Uh, myself and two assistants. Uh, Kitty? Number one, is, is, um, is Brenda Starr based on a real character? No, Ma imaginary. I think so. Number two, can you tell me uh, who was the originator of the Gumps? Sidney Smith. Number three, what is the funniest comic card you ever did? Well, that dates back to when I started in this field, and it was uh, really a, a comic card. It was a greeting card. A prisoner in a striped suit and back of uh, bars and something about... Uh, I've actually forgotten the uh, dialogue, something about uh, my Thank freedom you. is lost or something like Have that. Have you got, do you... Uh... Fred, that's it, panel. Your freedom is lost. I'd like to know what happens to a fiddler's dog, but we'll find that out later. <laughs> it's time to vote right now. So without consultation, panel again, as before, will you mark your ballots and vote for number one, number two, or number three? All set? Polly? For sure. whom did you vote? Well, this is always dangerous. I'm positive it's number two. <laughs> Which, of course, means that it isn't. But uh, number three didn't know the name of the car, the Cheetah, which is currently running. I know they draw ahead of time, but I'm sure that the real Dale Mezic would know. And number one did answer a couple of questions, but there were several names of cartoonists that she didn't know. So I'm fairly positive it's number two. Don? I also voted for number two. He knew Ferd Johnson was Frank Woodard was the originator, but Ferd worked with him for a long, long time. And he also knew that Sidney Smith invented, er, was the originator of the Gumps. Kitty? Well, I often ask questions to which I do not know the answers, such as who originated the Gumps? 
But it sounded so plausible that I voted for number two. All right. Let me worry there for a minute. You gave your reason first and you vote later. <laughs> That's a switch. Tom, what about your vote? Well, I voted. <laughs> Vote, I'm not surprised. I really am the real thing. I may be wrong, but I'm positive. <laughs> I voted for number two. Two. Two, two. Well, that makes it unanimous for number two. Let's find out. Because we've all cast our votes, we'll discover now whether we're right or wrong. And if you're playing along with us at home, hold your breath. Here we go. Let's to see which of these three people is the real creator and writer of Brenda Starr. Will the real Dale Messick please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Messick. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you mentioned on Ms. Messick, if you will, please? Thank you. Uh, my name is Alan Morrill, and I'm the manufacturer of the Noma Picture Hanger. <laughs> Number three, what about you? Your real name, please. My name is Myrtle Vernay, and I am secretary to Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> Wish we had time. I think the panel would like to know... I don't think the real one is me. But I, <laughs> I would like to know why you didn't know more about some of those cartoonists, but you probably work separately from them and wouldn't remember them anyway. However, the uh, totaling up things means 100% defeat for the panel because number two misled them right down the primrose path. That means four wrong votes at $250 each for a total of $1,000 from Helene Curtis and a gift box to launch three fragrances for each of you. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night and good luck. <laughs> now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Baylor Kira. What is your name, please? My name is Baylor Kira. What is your name, please? My name is Baylor Kira. Will you follow along once again, panel, with your copies of this affidavit? I, Baylor Kirai, have spent many years fighting communism. It started when I was taken prisoner of war by the Russians in 1945. Several months later, I managed to escape. In 1951, I was again arrested and this time condemned to death. For five years, I was interned by the communists, but eventually set free. Upon my release, the Hungarian freedom fighters elected me commander in chief and the premier of Hungary appointed me military commander of Budapest. With the rank of major general, I led my people in the great fight against communism, the 1956 Hungarian revolution. Signed, General Bela Kirai. <laughs> Three gentlemen, let me remind you, each one claiming to be General Bela Kirai, leader of the Hungarian Revolution of 1956. And we will start this round with Don Amici. Don? Number one, how did Budapest get its name? What does it mean, Budapest? It's two cities. One side is Buddha and the other is Pest. Uh, number two, what is Cardinal Mincenti's first name? Janusz. Number three? Józef. Joseph. Uh, number one, when was uh, Cardinal Mincenti arrested? I don't know. Number two? Uh, after, uh, after he escaped after the revolution, four days after the Russian uh, escape to the American no. uh, embassy. Kitty? Uh, thank you, Bud. I'm very proud to meet all you gentlemen. It's a great privilege to meet you. Um, number one, what uh, does Janos mean in English? Jan. Uh, John. Joseph or John. Uh, do you say that was uh, Nagy's first name? Nagy's? Yes. But Imre. What was his name? Imre. Imre. Uh, number two, it says here that you uh, escaped from the Russians in 1945. How did you escape? Uh, the first one, that was before we 
go to the, to the trail to Russia, so I escaped the way by the Romanian. Tom? Thank you. I echo Kitty's sentiment. I'm sure everyone does. Number three, who is Jugashvili? Stalin. Thank you. <laughs> not, a is, not a is anymore, is it? That was. Number two, what does Hoytva mean? Hoytva, how are you? Thank you. Number one, who is Rakosi? Uh, he's the, the leader from the Communist Party. Polly? Uh, number two, uh, did you read Exodus? The uh, book Exodus. Did you read it? No. No, never. Uh, I wondered because there's a great deal of time devoted to the fight for freedom in, in Hungary. And number three, did you read it? No, I did. I did not. Uh, number one, uh, in 1951, it said you were arrested again and condemned to death. What was their reason for not uh, filling out the sentence immediately? Uh, I, they did, the communism, they didn't like me very much. <laughs> well, I'm sorry we didn't get time to fill that out, but you may want to ask some questions later on. It's time to vote right now, so will you kindly mark your ballots? And in so doing, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Everyone voted? Oh. Ballots all marked. Please mark them quickly because I want to call for them. Okay, Tom? Polly, for whom did you vote? I would just like to say that, uh, though it's been said before, whichever one is the real one, I don't care whether I'm right or not, but uh, it's a great privilege for all of us in, in America to finally see you in person. You're here. I voted for number three. I really, it was very difficult for me because I, I don't understand Hungarian and I know very little about the cities in Hungary, so it was more or less of a choice, just eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Don? Mine was a pure vote also, uh, uh, but it's a uh, pure guess, I'm sorry. I voted for number three also. Kitty? I voted for number one on the basis of his looks and on the basis of Imre, I think, Nagy, and some of the answers. Buddha and Pest, well, I'm sure everyone knows. Tom? I suppose it's possible that he wouldn't know Mitsenti's first name, or maybe it was just, that's why I voted, I, I, I forgave him that answer and voted for one, two. All right, there we have it. Two for one and two for three and none for number two. Let's discover which one is the real one, the real leader of the Hungarian Revolution. So will the real General Bela Kirai please stand up? May I say, God bless you, sir. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Nicholas Rappi. I'm the owner from the Chardas Restaurant in New York. Thank you, sir. <laughs> now she recognizes you. Number two, your real name and what you do, please. My name is Bela Holby. I am a portrait photographer here in New York. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Sticking up on our score, we find there were two incorrect votes uh, at... $250 each for a total of $500 from Helene Curtis and a gift box of Lanthorique fragrances to your ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being with us. Good night and good luck. <laughs> well, that's about all the time we have for tonight, panel, except that I may never know what happens to a fiddler's dog. Good night, panel. Good, good night, night Bud. Bud. And this is Bud Collier saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding all of you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> To tell the truth is Marcus and Bill Gutman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen Down by Fashions of the Four Seasons. <laughs> to tell the truth has been brought to you by Lean Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of endless dandruff treatment shampoo and suave hairdressing and conditioning. Now, this is Vern Bennett saying goodbye from Helene Curtis. Thank you.